The story of my experiments with truth is the autobiography of Indian activist Mohandas K. Mahatma Gandhi. Published in a weekly journal, Navjavan, between 1925 and 1929, it covers the span of time between Gandhi's early childhood through roughly 1921. Gandhi was compelled to write the autobiography by his close friend, Swami Anand, who would become his literary manager. The autobiography seeks to explain the experiential roots of Gandhi's activist vocation. The book has been recognized as one of the most important spiritual works of the 20th century. In the book's introduction, Gandhi disclaims that the opinions and ideas expressed in his autobiography are subject to change and that its purpose is not to relay a static picture of himself but to show how personal truths evolve over time. He also claims that the book is moral and spiritual in nature, mostly straying from politics. Gandhi expresses ambivalence about the usefulness of the typical autobiography, a Western literary invention. The beginning of the autobiography traces Gandhi's childhood and young adult life in Rajkot in Parbandar. Gandhi recalls eating meat, a practice he later renounced, and relates that he had a rather hedonistic lifestyle in general. He admits to stealing and drinking excessively all actions from which he now aspires to redeem himself. He explores some of his first favorite books, including the plays Harish Chandra and Shravana Pitrabhakti Nataka. The latter play, in which the central figure Shravana realizes a deep respect for his parents, moved Gandhi to do the same. Gandhi married when he was only 13 and expresses deep regret for it, calling it preposterously early and fully denouncing its moral basis. Another of Gandhi's most formative experiences was the early death of his father, Karampan Gandhi. His later activist work was heavily informed by his early losses and mistakes. After the death of his father, Gandhi decided to study at a local college in Bhavnagar, Samaldas College. He remained there only for a semester, then, he traveled to England with the intention of doing three years of prerequisite coursework to become a barrister. Gandhi's mother disapproved of his plan, and he tried to placate her by renouncing wine, women, and eat while in England. He completed his studies, passed the barrister exams, and enrolled in the Indian courts. Once he was back in India, Gandhi lost some confidence in his decision to practice law. His education and credentials ultimately failed to repair or prevent many of the mistakes he and others made. He tried to provide legal mediation between an acquaintance and his brother, but their relationship only worsened. The acquaintance then became England's political agent, which meant that he was in charge of deciding the outcome of the same legal appeal in which they were all involved. Gandhi decided to move to South Africa to take an offer to work for a law firm on a lengthy and complicated case. After a year there, he committed to remain and work on behalf of its struggling Indian population. He lived there up until 1914, just two weeks before the beginning of World War I. At the beginning of the war, Gandhi became involved in the recruitment of soldiers for the British Army. His followers were confused about his sudden expressions of affinities for war, having fallen in love with him based on his speeches advocating pacifism, religious tolerance, and nonviolent revolution. Finding his work unconscionable, Gandhi returned to India. He continued his work as a public lawyer for vulnerable populations. This time, he was preceded by his good reputation in South Africa and therefore had much more choice about the type of work he could take on. Up until the time of writing his autobiography, Gandhi worked on civil disobedience cases, becoming a prominent advocate for non-violent resistance. Gandhi concludes that his life's good work, so far, has resulted from the gradual taming of his destructive passions. He states that the desire for power, which begets ignorance, greed, and violence, exists within every human being. In his view, even more pernicious than the impulse for outright physical war are these subtler products of the desire to control people. He argues that the only way to find salvation is to reject these impulses, embrace a virtuous and spiritual life, and actively work to create a more tolerant and just world. In his final farewell section, Gandhi writes that he never imagined these writings would transform into an autobiography. He hopes that his readers will look past the genre ascribed to his work and utilize his experience to generate insights into their own pasts and conceptions of truth. This idea of truth is an ever-evolving process of developing a mindset about the world, rather than the study of a static object, is central to Gandhi's autobiography. I hope you enjoy this video leave a like, if you didn't be sure to subscribe for more lore thank you all so much for your support.